In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls, giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, reign on earth. Fiat. Book of Heaven, Volume 12, Part 1, JMJ, March 16, 1917, How the Tight Union Between the Soul and God is Never Broken. My usual state continues, and my always lovable Jesus makes himself seen almost like a flash, and flying past. And if I lament, he tells me, My daughter, my daughter, poor daughter, if you knew what shall happen, you would suffer very much. And I, in order not to make you suffer so much, try to escape you. And I return to lament, saying to him, my life. I did not expect this from you. You, who seemed to be incapable and unable to be without me, and now, hours and hours, and sometimes it seems you want to let the entire day go by. Jesus, don't do this to me. How you have changed. And Jesus surprises me and says to me, Calm yourself, calm yourself. I have not changed. I am immutable. Even more, I tell you that when I communicate myself to the soul, and I have kept her clasped with me, I have spoken to her, I have poured out my love. This is never broken between me and the soul. At the most, I change the way, now one way, now another, but always I keep inventing how to speak to her and pour myself out with her in love. And don't you yourself see that if I have not told you anything in the morning, I am almost waiting for the evening to say a word to you? And when they read the applications of my passion, since I am in you, I pour myself up to the brim of your soul, and I speak to you of my most intimate things that I had not manifested until now, and of how the soul must follow me in that operating of mine. Those applications shall be the mirror of my interior life, and whoever shall reflect himself in it shall copy my own life within himself. 
Oh, how they reveal my love, my thirst for souls, and in each fiber of my heart, in each of my breaths, thoughts, and so forth. Therefore I speak to you more than ever, but as soon as I finish, I hide. And you not seeing me, tell me that I have changed. Even more I tell you that when you do not want to repeat with your voice what I say to you in your interior, you hinder my outpouring of love. March 18th, 1917. Effects of Fusing Oneself in Jesus I was praying, fusing all of myself in Jesus, and I wanted each thought of Jesus in my power, so as to be able to have life in each thought of creature, to be able to repair with the very thought of Jesus, and so with all the rest. And my sweet Jesus told me, My daughter, my humanity on earth did nothing other than link each thought of creature with my own. So each thought of creature reverberated in my mind, each word in my voice, each heartbeat in my heart, each action in my hands, each step in my feet, and so with all the rest. With this I gave to the Father divine reparations. Now everything I did upon earth I continue in heaven, and as creatures think, their thoughts pour into my mind. As they look, I feel their gazes in mine. So as though a continuous electricity flows between me and them, as the members are in continuous communication with the head, and I say to the Father, My Father, I am not the only one who prays you, repairs, satisfies, appeases you, but there are other creatures who do within me what I do, even more with their suffering. They make up for my humanity that is glorious and incapable of suffering. By fusing herself in me, the soul repeats what I did and continue to do. But what shall be the contentment of these souls who have lived their life in me, embracing together with me all creatures, all reparations, when they are with me in heaven? They shall continue their life in me, and as creatures shall think or shall offend me with thoughts, these shall reverberate in their mind, and they shall continue the reparations that they did on earth. They shall be, together with me, the sentries of honor before the divine throne, and as creatures on earth shall offend me, they shall do the opposite acts in heaven. They shall guard my throne. They shall have the place of honor, they shall be the ones who shall comprehend me the most, the most glorious. Their glory shall be all fused in mine, and mine in theirs. So let your life be all fused in mine. Make no act without letting it pass into me, and every time you fuse yourself in me, I shall pour in you new grace and new light and shall make myself the vigilant sentry of your heart, so as to keep any shadow of sin away from you. I shall guard you as my own humanity, and I shall command the angels to form a circle around that you may be defended from everything and from everyone. Footnote Within this last reading, Jesus is talking about the soul's who live in the divine will. March 28, 1917 The I Love You of Jesus The Immediate Act With Him 
continuing in my usual state. My always lovable Jesus just barely made himself seen, but so afflicted as to arouse pity. And I said to him, What's wrong, Jesus? And he, My daughter, there shall be and shall happen unexpected things, and all of a sudden, and revolutions shall break out everywhere. Oh, how things shall get worse. And all afflicted, he remained in silence. And I, life of my life, tell me another word. And Jesus, as though breathing over me, said, I love you. But in that I love you, it seemed that everyone and all things received new life. And I repeated, Jesus, say one more word. And he, more beautiful word than an I love you, I could not tell you. And this I love you of mine fills heaven and earth. It circulates in the saints, and they receive new glory. It descends into the hearts of pilgrim souls, and some receive grace of conversion, some of sanctification. It penetrates into purgatory, and it pours over souls like beneficial dew, and they feel refreshment from it. Even the elements feel invested with new life, in fecundating, in growing. So all perceive the I love you of your Jesus. And do you know when the soul draws an I love you of mine upon herself? When fusing herself in me, she takes on the divine attitude, and dissolving herself within me, she does everything I do. And I, my love, many times it is difficult to always maintain this divine attitude. And Jesus, my daughter, what the soul cannot always do with her immediate acts in me, she can make up for with the attitude of her good will. And I shall be so pleased with it as to make myself the vigilant sentry of each thought, of each word, of each heartbeat, and so forth. And I shall place them inside and outside of me as my cortege, looking at them with such love as the fruit of the good will of the creature. When the soul then, fusing herself in me, does her immediate acts with me. Then I feel so drawn toward her that I do what she does together with her, and I transmute the operating of the creature into divine. I take everything into account, and I reward everything, even the smallest things. And even just one good act of the will does not remain defrauded in the creature. April 2nd, 1917 The pains of the privation of Jesus are divine pains. I was lamenting to my always lovable Jesus about his usual privations and was saying to him, My love, what a continuous death! Each privation of you is a death that I feel, but such cruel and ruthless death, that while it makes me feel the effects of death, it does not make me die. I have not understood how the goodness of your heart can endure seeing me suffer so many continuous deaths, and then make me still continue to live. And blessed Jesus came for just a little, 
and pressing me to his heart, told me, My daughter, press yourself to my heart and draw life. But know, however, that the pain most satisfying, most pleasing, most powerful, that equals me the most and can stand before me, is the pain of my privation, because it is divine pain. You must know that souls are so bound with me as to form many links connected together within my humanity. And as souls become lost, they break these links, and I feel the pain as if one member were detaching itself from the other. Now, who can join these links for me? Who can weld them in such a way as to make the split disappear? Who can make them enter into me again to give them life? The pain of my privation, because it is divine. My pain, because of the loss of souls, is divine. The pain of the soul who cannot see me, cannot feel me, is divine. And since both of them are divine pains, they can kiss each other, join together, stand before each other, and have such power as to take the souls unlinked and connect them in my humanity. My daughter, does my privation cost you much? And if it does cost you, do not keep as useless a pain of such great cost. As I give it to you as a gift, do not keep it for yourself, but let it fly into the midst of the combatants, snatch souls from amid the bullets, and enclose them in me. And as the weld and seal, place your pain and then let your pain make its round through the whole world to make it catch souls and bring them all back into me. So, as you feel the pains of my privation, you shall keep placing the seal of the reconnection. April 12th, 1917. It is not the suffering that renders the creature unhappy. She becomes unhappy when something is missing to her love. As I was in my usual state, my always lovable Jesus came, and since I was a little in suffering, he took me in his arms and told me, My beloved daughter, beloved daughter of mine, rest in me. Even more, your pains. Do not keep them with yourself, but send them up to my cross, that they may become the cortege of my pains and relieve me, and my pains may be the cortege of yours and sustain you, burn with the same fire, and be consumed together. And I shall look upon your pains as my own. I shall give them the same effects, the same value, and they shall do the same offices that I did on the cross before the Father and before souls. Even more, come, you yourself, onto the cross. How happy we shall be together, even in suffering. In fact, it is not the suffering that renders the creature unhappy. On the contrary, suffering makes her victorious, glorious, rich, beautiful. But she becomes unhappy when something is missing to her love. You, united with me on the cross, shall be completely satisfied in love. Your pains shall be love. Your life, love, all love and therefore you shall be happy. April 18th, 1917, pouring oneself into the divine will and fusing oneself in Jesus, forms beneficial due over all creatures. 
I was fusing myself in my sweet Jesus. To be able to diffuse myself in all creatures and fuse them all in Jesus. And I kept flinging myself between the creatures and Jesus to prevent my beloved Jesus from being offended and creatures from being able to offend him. Now, while I was doing this, he told me, My daughter, as you pour yourself into my will and fuse yourself in me, a son is formed in you. As you keep thinking, loving, repairing, and so forth, the rays are formed, and my will, as background, makes itself crown of these rays, and the sun is formed that, rising up in the air, melts into beneficial dew over all creatures. So the more you fuse yourself in me, the more suns you keep forming. Oh, how beautiful it is to see these suns that rising and rising remain circumfused within my own sun and pour beneficial dew over all. How many graces do creatures not receive? I am so taken by this that as they fuse themselves, I pour abundant dew of all kinds of graces upon them so that they can form greater suns, such that I may be able to pour more abundantly the beneficial dew over all. And as I was fusing myself, I could feel light, love, graces, being poured over my head. May 2nd, 1917 how Jesus died little by little. Finding myself in my usual state, I was lamenting to my sweet Jesus because of his privations, saying to him, My love, who could ever think that your privation would have to cost me so much? I feel myself dying little by little. Each act of mine is a death that I feel because I cannot find the life. But dying and living is even more cruel. Even more, it is double death. And my lovable Jesus came flashing by and told me, My daughter, courage and firmness in everything. And then, don't you want to imitate me? I too died little by little. As creatures offended me in their steps, I felt the tearing in my feet, but with such bitterness of spasm as to be capable of giving me death. And while I would feel myself dying, yet I would not die. As they offended me with their works, I felt death in my hands, and at the cruel torment, I agonized. I felt faint, but the will of the Father sustained me. I would die and not die. As the evil voices, the horrendous blasphemies of creatures, reverberated in my voice, I felt myself suffocating, my word being choked, poisoned, and I felt death in my voice. But I would not die. And my tortured heart, has it palpitated? I felt in my heartbeat the evil lives, souls tearing themselves away, and my heart was in continuous tearing and lacerations. I agonized and died continuously in each creature, in each offense. Yet love, the divine will, forced me to live. This is the reason for your dying little by little. I want you together with me. I want your company in my deaths. Aren't you happy? May 10th, 1917. How, with his breath, Jesus gives motion and life to all creatures. 
continuing in my poor state, I was trying to fuse myself and my sweet Jesus, according to my usual way. But as hard as I tried, it was in vain. Jesus himself distracted me and, sighing strongly, told me, My daughter, the creature is nothing other than my breath. As I breathe, I give life to everything. All life is in the breathing. If there is no breathing, the heart no longer beats. The blood no longer circulates. The hands remain inactive. The mind feels the intelligence die. And so with all the rest. So the whole of human life is in receiving and in giving this breath. But while with my breath I give life and motion to all creatures, and with my holy breath I want to sanctify them, love them, embellish them, enrich them, and so forth. In giving me the breath they receive, they send me offenses, rebellions, ingratitudes, blasphemies, denials, and all the rest. So I send the breath as pure, and it comes to me impure. I send it in blessing, and it comes to me cursing. I send it all love, and it comes to me offending me deep into my inmost heart. But love makes me continue to send breath to maintain these machines of human lives. Otherwise, they would no longer function and would end up in ruin. Ah, oh, my daughter, have you heard how human life is maintained? By my breath. And when I find a soul who loves me, how sweet her breath is, how she amuses me. I feel cheered. An echo of harmonies forms between me and her that remain distinct from the other creatures and shall be distinct also in heaven. My daughter, I could not contain my love and I wanted to pour myself out with you. So today I could not fuse myself in Jesus because he himself kept me occupied in his breath. How many things I comprehended, but I am unable to say them well, and I stop here. May 12, 1917, the one who doubts about the love of Jesus saddens him. Since my always lovable Jesus had not come, and I was very afflicted, while I was praying, a thought flew into my mind. Did the thought ever come to you that you might be lost? I never really think about this, so I remained a bit surprised. But good Jesus, who watches over me in everything, immediately moved in my interior and told me, My daughter, this is true strangeness, and that saddens my love very much. If a daughter said to her father, I am not your daughter. You shall not give me a share of your inheritance. You don't want to give me food. You don't want to keep me in your house. And she torments herself and sends out laments. What would the poor father say? Strangeness. This daughter is crazy. And with all love, he would say to her, But tell me, if you are not my daughter, whose daughter are you? How is this? You live under my same roof. You eat at my same table. I clothe you with my money, earned with my own sweat. If you are ill, I assist you, and I procure the means to heal you. Why then do you doubt that you are my daughter? With more reason, I would say to one who doubts about my love and feared that she might be lost, How is this? 
I give you my flesh for food. You live completely of my own. If you are ill, I heal you with the sacraments. If you are stained, I wash you with my blood. I can say that I am almost at your disposal, and you doubt? Do you want to sadden me? Tell me then, do you love someone else? Do you recognize some other being as another father, since you say that you are not my daughter? And if this is not, why do you want to afflict yourself and sadden me? Aren't the bitternesses that others give me enough? You too want to put pains in my heart? May 16th, 1917 Effects of the Hours of the Passion Finding myself in my usual state, I was fusing all of myself in my sweet Jesus, and then I poured all of myself into the creatures in order to give the whole of Jesus to all creatures. And my lovable Jesus told me, My daughter, every time the creature fuses herself in me, she gives to all creatures the influence of divine life, and according to what creatures need, they obtain their effect. Those who are weak feel strength. Those who are obstinate in sin receive light. Those who suffer comfort, and so with all the rest. Then I found myself outside of myself. I was in the midst of many souls who were saying to me, and they seemed to be purging souls and saints, and were mentioning one person known to me who died not too long ago. And they were saying to me, He feels as though happy in seeing that there is not one soul who enters purgatory without carrying the mark of the hours of the passion, and surrounded by the cortege of these hours, and helped by them, souls take a safe place. And there is not one soul who flies into heaven without being accompanied by these hours of the passion. These hours make a continuous dew rain down from heaven to earth, into purgatory, and even into heaven. On hearing this, I said to myself, Maybe my beloved Jesus, in order to keep the word he had given, that for each word of the hours of the Passion he would give a soul? There is not one soul whom he saves who does not benefit from these hours. Afterwards I returned into myself, and as I found my sweet Jesus, I asked him whether that was true. And he, These hours are the order of the universe. They put heaven and earth in harmony and hold me back from sending the world to ruin. I feel my blood, my wounds, my love, and everything I did being placed in circulation, and they flow over all in order to save all. And as souls do these hours of the passion, I feel my blood my wounds, my yearnings to save souls, being put on the way, and I feel my life being repeated. How could creatures obtain any good if not by means of these hours? Why do you doubt? This thing is not yours, but mine. You have been the strained and weak instrument. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 12, Part 1. Peace. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat.
et amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.